Welcome back. We're here at uh, the crossing uh, border. Uh, with, uh, it's not crossing border. It's family of crossing border. It's border sessions uh, festival. We're here two days in uh, the Hague. Two days of uh, interviews we're doing here. Uh, my guest now is Heather Dewey Hegberg. Um, your talk, welcome. Uh, you. your, your talk was called How Much Can You Learn About a Stranger uh, from a Hair? Uh, well, it's, it's good that you started with, with, with a question. So, how, how much can you learn? <laughs> Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and this has, been your, bit. this has been your whole research tragic exactly. of the last couple of years and, and an arts project uh, com combined. So, 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 so um, when we go back to the, to the start, when you thought this is what I want to uh, invest, uh, investigate. Yeah. Uh, um, where do you start? Well, the idea really came to me, as I explained in the presentation, uh, in a therapy session. And I was sitting and I was staring at a print on the wall and I noticed that the glass covering the print was cracked and there was a hair stuck in the crack. And so I sat there for an hour staring at this hair and I just began wondering if I thought about it from a kind of forensic science perspective, how much could I learn about that person who'd left the hair behind? And so that led me to joining a biohacker space in Brooklyn called GenSpace and sort of learning from the ground up as much as I could about um, the genetics behind appearance and sort of looking also at this uh, from in a speculative way. You know, what do we know today about what someone looks like, but where does the research point that we might know, you know, five years from now as well? And so I started on that project in 2012, and at that point it was still pointing in a future kind of direction, saying, uh, where is this technology which is called forensic DNA phenotyping? Where the, might this be in five years? And now in 2016, there is actually a company selling this as a product to the really? police. So it was even faster than I imagined it would be. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and, and this company that's selling this, yeah. so to, to, to whom are they, are they selling it? Who, who are the buyers? Uh, the buyers are police departments in the United States. Um, and I think there's actually two companies now that are doing something similar. One is uh, called Parabon. They're doing exactly what I did of generating portraits yeah. uh, from DNA samples. The other one called Identitas is doing more of a written profile. So I think you know, the written profile is a bit better in that context because at least it gives some indication of the probabilistic nature of this stuff for the police. So part of what I'm trying to do in the, with the work and also in my conversation about the work is point to the problems that might come with this kind of technology. And, what, and what's, which problems do you see? The biggest problem from my perspective is that it becomes a new form of racial profiling and that, that shores up the idea that there's a biological basis for race. Um, so basically there are ways of looking at, the, at DNA, of course you know most of us, the 99.9% .9 of our DNA is the same, but if you start studying that 0.1% that's different person to person, you can start making correlations between different things and one of those things is called ancestry, which is just a sort of more politically correct term for race, for what we think of as race. Yeah. And um, so there are these ways of attempting to read racial categories from DNA, from the body, and sort of reinscribe them. And um, so that is, I think, the biggest problem with this, that it ends up reinforcing this idea that race is actually biologically constructed rather than socially constructed, and uh, can be used as a new form of profiling. So for example, if uh, the police, let's say in the United States, uh, get a, a, a DNA sample and analyze it and it says this per person is 60% of African ancestry, 40% European ancestry, what is the image that's going to come into their mind um, or what is the image that's going to be generated in this phenotype, how will it be interpreted yeah. and how might that be used to essentially create racial dragnets of certain populations. Yeah. Um, and and uh, concluding that, that that's, that, that, that's uh, how people can, can start using it. Is there, um, so what you want to raise uh, awareness uh, mm -hmm. around uh, yeah. this subject? Provoke uh, questioning. Yeah, questioning, uh, at least think, think about this. Yeah. Is, is, it what, is this what we want? Should we want it mm -hmm. or, or, or whatever? Um, interesting thing of, of technology, or, or some, yeah, some technology people that say yeah, everything that can be possible will be possible mm -hmm. and, 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 and will be used. Um, um, so, so uh, and there will always be people using it, even if maybe you and I say, well, should, should, should we do this? So, yeah. so how, how, do you look, uh, how do you look upon that? Uh, is, it, is it possible if we all start saying to each other now we don't want it? Do you think is, is it possible to, 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 if we would want it? 
I think, I mean, I think it's very hard with technology to say, okay, now we're doing a thing, we're going to just stop doing it and revert back to the way things were or in some way. But I think that there are certain avenues towards doing something better, you know? So with this phenotyping technology, for example, there are regulations we could pass that would say, okay, um, the police can't use this certain type of technology in this context. Maybe they can use phenotyping for generating portraits from unidentified remains, for example. So maybe you can use it in a, in a way in which it doesn't potentially have implications for someone who's completely innocent to be harassed or arrested. Um, so it, I think that there's as a culture we can say these are ways that we're comfortable with this technology and these are ways that we're going to say we're going to regulate out yeah. of the use. So I think that's one thing. Another thing I think is filtering some of this uh, into education so that we have a better understanding of what we're really talking about when we're talking about genetics, what we're talking about when we talk about race or gender, sexuality. You know, what do these things really mean? And so that's like an educational issue. And then also an issue of kind of cultural norms. So how do we think about these things culturally when we're talking to each other and relating to them and, and even thinking about our own bodies? Yeah. Uh, you said when I started this project and I, and I, and I, and I was thinking what will technology yeah. uh, be like in five years time, it did go even faster. So, so uh, are we in a, a period of uh, yeah, fast developments? Is, is, so, so, so where, where yeah. Um, yeah, is this a sort of a peak of the development? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we're at the peak yet. yet I think we're ramping up, honestly. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's increasing and increasing and increasing. So, yeah, so it was a little bit faster than I thought it would be that this company started offering this service. Um, but if you consider that they, they opened um, in 2015, started offering this phenotyping service in the next couple of years. What does that mean? How will that profile expand? So if right now we're looking at uh, physical characteristics from DNA, maybe the next thing is looking at behavioral characteristics, and then maybe the next thing is even looking at last name, because there's a, a, the ability through a, a looking at the Y chromosome to trace ancestry through the Y chromosome, and that correlates with last name in sort of patrilineal societies. Yeah. So we can also start making inferences about things like that. So I would predict that that's what's going to happen in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, so what is, uh, what is good about it that we can do this? So I do think that there is the potential for using this kind of technology to look at um, unidentified remains, to give faces to victims of crimes um, <coughs> who, you know, whose faces have been damaged um, or destroyed. So I think that there is the potential for a good use of this technology in that, looking at disaster victims also. Um, so just in providing some clues about who this person might be to help their families find them, for example. I think that's a fantastic use of this technology with very little risk. Yeah. You, um, uh, is, has, has your pro project uh, f finished, na finished now? Or is this a, so are you going <laughs> to a new, new project or is this subject for you uh, uh, done? Uh, so I just finished writing a dissertation about the project, actually, which is uh, post-genomic identity is the name of this dissertation. And so I've been continuing to really think deeply about what it all means. Um, and so that's reflected in my writing and my talking about the work. Um, I am starting a new project, which is sort of a neighboring project. It's very related, uh, kind of in the same body of work, let's say. Um, but I am, I am definitely moving on to new, to new projects, yeah. uh, but still looking at the kind of vulnerabilities uh, of our DNA and the sensitive information it contains, how these might be used against us. And um, sort of now I'm really interested also in the question of consent. So if you have some um, blood taken from you in the hospital, after you have blood tests run on it, what's done with the remainder of that and is it okay for that waste to be used uh, by me biomedical companies, pharmaceutical companies, that kind of thing. So yeah. That's what um, I'm at so, now. so you uh, you are an artist and a scientist uh, at, at the same time. I'm an artist and a biohacker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a re uh, uh, well, there are a, a, a lot of people with, with such, such, such different uh, qualities, uh, uh, as, as, so to say. How does it? Uh, how does that help you? Because we see a lot of things happening at the moment, of course, where different uh, fields of, uh, of art and mm. science come, come, come together, but you em embody them uh, 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 both. So how does it help you? 
the, the, the different fields where you come from, where your qualities are. How does it help me? I mean, I guess um, I have, I sort of came from a very interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary background, so I've always worked at the intersection of lots of different fields, and I've always been interested in art as using art as a way of exploring philosophical questions or probing political and social issues. So for me, art is always this kind of tool or it's almost a kind of evidence of these other kind of explorations. So my interest in art is in, in that sort of visual artifact or the visual evidence of these exploratory processes, really. So that's just how I've always worked, yeah. really, I mean, since I was in an undergraduate. Yeah, so for you it's not... Yeah, I was doing yeah. then computer science and art, so I did, I did a little bit of science, you know, I did study computer science also. Yeah. So I was very interested in artificial intelligence, machine learning, yeah. and things which are very much in the news now. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that, 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 I remember a presentation of uh, Kevin Kelly at South by Southwest, mm -hmm. and he said like in the next coming years all the, uh, all the startups will say we do this and this and this, plus artificial, so he, you need to, right. do, uh, AI need, needs to be part of the, yes, the discussion exactly. of everything exactly, people exactly, do. Exactly, yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. where a lot of the, my interest in the surveillance issues with biotech came from an interest in electronic surveillance and looking at facial recognition and speech recognition and how those systems uh, were being used in oppressive ways. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching, we'll do one uh, other interview uh, today and if you're, uh, 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 watching live you can watch us live tomorrow again and of course you can watch all the videos on our YouTube channel thanks a lot